Okay, so today we're going to talk about key business lessons that I learned from Tony Shea that helped uh, helped make me a millionaire and helped uh, help shape the businesses that I have today. And you know, Tony Shea just passed away uh, a couple of days ago, and um, it just came out of nowhere. I mean, he was 46 years old, way too young. I think it was complications from a, a home fire incident. But um, for those of you that don't know, he is. Uh, one of, he was one of the co-founders of Zappos, which sold to um, Amazon for over, I believe, one point two billion dollars or so. And this was way back when. And um, you know, this was he started the e-commerce thing when um, e-commerce website when he saw that shoes were um, basically five percent of people were buying shoes from mail order, I believe. And he decided to take on the challenge. I mean, originally he had a business called Link Exchange, sold for about 270 million plus dollars uh, to, I think it was to Microsoft. And he decided that he wanted to do something afterwards. And um, one of the key things I learned from him reading his book, Delivering Happiness, which I highly recommend, is that culture is the number one thing. Because when you think about, uh, you're talking about uh, Zappos, everyone loved working there. The customer support was great. It was just a great company to work for and they sold shoes. Um, whereas the previous company who was at Link Exchange, it was just, he didn't know, he, there's a time where he just dreaded coming into work. He didn't like it anymore. Um, so his number one thing was always about building a really good culture. And I used to think, um, uh, people were just paying lip service to that. Like, what does culture really mean? Like, it just, it seems like this pie in the sky thing. Like, I'm just going to focus on doing work, but in order to do amazing work, in order to keep people aligned, in order to keep people motivated and, and love coming to work, you got to have a great culture, right? Cause that is the entire, the bedrock. That is the programming of the company, right? A, the number one thing is you got to have the great, you know, the, the, the right people, but to keep the right people with you, you got to have a great culture, right? So those two things kind of go hand in hand. And, you know, when I read the book, I didn't really realize it until I thought about it a more, thought about it more as my career went on. I, mean, I didn't, didn't really understand until the first business I, I, um, I had, uh, well, we'll say single grain, we dropped all the way down to one employee because I didn't understand culture. Um, I didn't understand what I was doing and um, it was just kind of all over the place and that's completely my fault. Um, and so the other thing is Tony Shea, what I also learned from him is generosity because as I was going through the, the book, Delivering Happiness, he also said at the very end um, that he's giving away a, a, a book called Tribal Leadership, which I believe he bought the rights to, and he's just like, okay, everyone needs to have this, right? Um, and then I believe you can still go to, you can just type in Tribal Leadership Zappos, you can still get a copy of the book. I got it, and that was also great for me. So, you know, the second thing would be he's very generous, but also it's because he wants people to learn as well. And so Tribal Leadership taught me that there's ultimately five different types of companies. Level five would be like a NASA, where it's like, we're gonna help the world, right? Level four type of company is, you know, we're a great company. A level three person, I should say, is like, you know, oh, I'm really good. I'm not sure about other people, but I, I know I'm damn good, right? So you just kind of go down the ladder. And level level one would be it's not a very good company, and I, you know it's I don't want to be here. Um, and then two is is more so it's kind of you know it's more so like a like a one as well. It's just people are not aligned. When you're a two, you don't think you're that good too, right? So you gotta you gotta think about yourself and you gotta think about the company as well. But ultimately, what we should be aspiring to is to be a level five or at the very minimum a level four company where um, everyone is. Um, the, the entire company believes that they're doing well, right? They might be competing with other companies, but at least you have people aligned there. That's great, right? Um, so I learned that from tribal leadership. Um, and also, I think it's also important to understand from a, to take from poker, know when to hold them and know when to fold them as well. One of the reasons why Zappel sold to Amazon was because actually uh, what was happening with Tony was that he was getting a lot of pressure from Sequoia, his board at Sequoia, which was the venture firm that put in uh, the venture firm popular VC firm, they wanted to um, pressure Tony into thinking about, okay, you know, how do we move forward with the next step? You know, should we be selling right now or whatever? Um, and, you know, they're basically looking for like a 4X return and something like that. And so what ended up happening was um, Tony and his co-founder, Alfred Lin, who actually now works at Sequoia, um, they didn't want to sell. They wanted to have control of the culture and they didn't want to be bullied. They didn't want to be pressured into doing this. And they felt like their board was kind of turning on them, Sequoia, and who the people that were supposed to be their allies, they were now pressuring them. And eventually what would happen, it would be Tony would be fired for not kind of um, following the will of the board. You know, there's a majority there. And um, eventually the culture would deteriorate. And um, Tony didn't want that to happen. And so, you know, what ended up happening was uh, Tony was initially opposed to sell to Amazon, but after talking to Amazon, he learned that, um, wow, you know what, actually, you know, 
getting more resources from, resources from Amazon and the leadership team from Amazon supporting us, um, that's going to be great. And I'm going to be allowed to continue to run the ship, um, have the culture as is, and I'm going to have this great exit as well. And Sequoia is also going to be happy. Um, you know, let's go ahead and do that. So he knew he knew that he didn't want to just hold on. Like if he just held on and stuck to, you know, kind of whatever he wanted to do, that might not necessarily work out and that actually might hurt the company for the long run. He didn't want that to happen. So in essence, he did fold them, but it still was a really good outcome for everyone across the board, right? So um, I wouldn't, I would say he folded in the sense that he didn't get to do what he wanted to do, right? Because there was outside pressure coming from Sequoia. Um, but, you know, in essence, he still found the best deal at the end of the day, right? So, um, you know, I think folding them in this context is not necessarily a bad thing like it might be. And I think you, you, you do have to know um, when to, you know, really dig in and when to kind of let loose and look for other alternatives, right? And I think he did perfect here. Um, I think he's also, what I also learned is that he's willing to try new things, meaning that with Zappos, he implemented this thing called Holacracy, which is a very flat management structure. And it's not necessarily something that I agree with. And I'm not sure, I don't think it, from what I read, I'm not sure it worked uh, it worked out for Zappos, and I don't know if they're still doing it right now. They could be, but holacracy is the idea that um, you know you'll have circles of teams, right? You're not going to exactly have a direct manager, but you're going to have circles, groups that you can join for different projects, right? Um, and on paper, when I first read about it, it sounded amazing. Um, I just don't know for me right now, looking at the businesses that I have, um, you know how it work out. Maybe I, it could work in the near. Um, you know, let's say 25 years out, 50 years out, 75 years out, um, where our entire society is a lot more entrepreneurial, holacracy could very very well work because people that are entrepreneurial, they're gonna make things happen um, and you know they're gonna think about things differently, right? So it could very well work. Maybe the timing isn't right right now, at least in my opinion. But I think the fact that he's daring to try that t type of stuff, um, he's got guts. And the other thing too is, I, I think he uh, his will will continue to carry on, but very giving because the even his Instagram, name is downtown Tony, right? He's focused on the downtown Las Vegas project where it was kind of, you know, run down before, but he kind of built it up, tried to build this uh, startup ecosystem, invested hundreds of millions of, of dollars of his, of his own money to um, to make this work, right? It's it's because he wants to, um, he wants to give back, you know, Vegas is where Zappos is and he wants to, um, he wants to make it a vibrant tech community, right? He thinks, oh, look, if San Francisco can do it, if Austin can do it, if, you know, let's say LA or New York, they have tech hubs as well, why can't we do it for Las Vegas, right? And that's was, that was his thinking. He wanted to bring uh, great jobs to, to Vegas as well. And so he's, he's largely done that. He's really revitalized um, downtown Las Vegas. And then the final thing I'll say here is that, you know, a couple years ago, I didn't realize this until after, but um, this was about four years ago. So we were on, on this cruise called Summit. And um, it was basically like a like a conference, like a tech conference on a cruise, and we we're out for three days. And you had amazing people speaking, like uh, Quentin Tarantino. Um, I think you had Kendrick Lamar, and um, there's you know people in, hanging out too, just all walks of life, um, or in tech. And then um, I saw Tony from from far away. I was like, oh, like I looked at him, and I was like, he looks really familiar. And we we kind of made eye contact for a second, but I didn't know what to do uh, because we we're far away. And I'm just like, you know. Um, I didn't realize it till after. I was like, because I was like, that guy looks really familiar. And I just kept looking at him. And then afterwards, I was like, oh, Tony Shea is here. And the fact that he's on these boats at these tech conferences, or that he was, um, just shows that he's willing to continue to learn. He's willing to, he understands the importance of networking as well. And um, he's always going to try to get better. And I think um, most people that are doing things in the world, I would say vir virtually all, they're all trying to get better and, and learn and grow. Um, some of the very best um minds in the world are always trying to do that, right? So those are just a couple of lessons that I learned um, that Tony Shea gave me, the wisdom that he gave me to help um, help make me successful. And hopefully you can do the same thing as well. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a billionaire or anything like that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, um, he really has helped me make millions and millions. And, um, you know, that, that wisdom, I will continue to try to pay it forward and hopefully it pays it forward for you as well. So before we go, if you want to get better, levelingup.com, get a free chapter of the book, and um, that is it for today. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And we will catch you later.